Hey baby, the cinema chez soi. The camera on the right and of course the projector. Soon after the introduction of the projector, a motor was also available, the first version of the motor, which as you can see here is fitted to the front section of the base. A colour wheel which I've demonstrated previously on this website. And um, not too long after that came a version with a dynamo. So while the mechanism was turning that would provide the electricity for the lamp, not too popular. And uh, an enlarger. This is the 1926 model. And here we can see something that looks very much like the two that we're currently working on at the moment. I don't have all of the attachments. And the final version of this was the G2, which is what we're looking at. Both examples I'm showing are G2 models. So by the mid 30s, that was the end of the development of the original Pathy Baby projector. Just a bit more adjustment and I think we'll be there. You can see there where my finger is. That's the shaped can. The projector had evolved from the Lumio Cinematograph. This is Hotwood's book, Living Pictures from 1899. It's actually Bert Aker's copy and Hotwood shows an early illustration of a Lumiere cinematograph mechanism with the central cam shown here. Now you'll see that that cam is circular in an oval frame and if we read the text he says if the central cam were a disc as shown in figure 93 the frame would take as long to make its downward journey as it would to travel in the reverse direction. And further, the motion would be continuous. Therefore, the cam is formed as shown in figure 94, with the result that, while the cam turns through 60 degrees, the frame remains stationary for the insertion of the pegs, which is the claws or pins. A further movement of 120 degrees drops the frame, the pegs drawing the film down. During the next 60 degrees of rotation, the frame remains still to allow the pegs to be withdrawn while 120 degrees required to complete one rotation are occupied by the rise of the frame. So let's have a look. Figure 94, we can see that the, the cam is now that shape, a kind of triangular shape, eccentrically mounted. This is, I think, the first published account of the Lumiere Cinematograph. And we can see that diagram slightly better here. This is an early Lumiere projector only cinematograph, which was actually made by the Pathy Company and gradually they brought out the patents, I think. Um, they evolved this over the years and a version of the triangular cam mechanism that had been used in the original Lumiere machine was adapted for the Pathy Baby home cinema projector. At the bottom of that cam 
is a follower that follows that wobbly line. And in going in and out, it takes the claws in and out. And it's also moving the triangular cam inside this frame and the triangular cam is eccentrically mounted and it moves that frame up and down the claws are attached to the bottom of this crooked cam by spring fitting so one cam takes the frame up and down and the other cam takes the claws in and out so you've got an up and down and an in and out movement we're nearly there I'm going to leave that for now uh, we're not actually going to use this machine but I will make the final adjustments to the shutter and then put everything back together and take a look at the other machine which is the one that we're actually going to attempt to get fully working I'm not going to test the motor on this one as we won't be using it so this is just for display but it does at least work in terms of uh, being able to turn it over The shutter is slightly hitting the bottom, which is the clunkiness. So I'll sort that out and then put this back together. Lots of dirt. Look at the dirt and the rust. Now, there's something of a fashion these days for keeping rust on old machines. It's not a good idea. I understand the aesthetic, it's supposed to show its age and its life, but the thing is, rust doesn't stay the same, it gets worse and you're eating into your metal all the time as the years go by. It should be removed. And um, if you want some rust, do what the vintage car people do, the classic car people, if they want it to look as though it's original and put some rust coloured paint on it <laughs> no I won't be retouching the black I don't think because we've got a better machine to use but it does deserve a good clean before it goes away on display again on my shelf both of these models are the G2 I think was the final version of the Pathoscope AB or Home Movie projector. So let's put this machine to one side and have a look at the other one, the one that we're intending to actually get working. Let's have a look in here as we did with the other machine. Okay, well, right away we can see a very different shutter. So take a closer look at that. It doesn't have an outer rim, only the shutter blade. I think that's been adapted from the original shutter. I'm pretty sure. Someone's done a good job there. Uh, it's much less heavy, of course, than the shutter would originally have been. And um, 
there's no concern with it scraping against the edges of the main frame. So, good job. Once again, you can see the lens in there. So there's a damage to the motor here, just superficial damage which I can restore. So I think we'll try this motor. Now there is one thing I have to admit concerning this motor. That's one of the motor brush screws, if you like, or covers. And there should be another one over there. But as um, you can possibly see, there isn't. It's missing. Because I cannibalised it to use it on my Pathoscope 200B that I restored recently. Um, but I can get one from the other motor on the other machine. The other happy baby that we've just been looking at and then put some juice onto this motor and see whether it will work it's uh, 110 volt so we'll need to feed it with 110 volts and then originally that 110 which is was then the French mains voltage would have gone to this resistance under here as well as the motor and from that resistance, I would have taken it down to the low voltage required for the lamp in here. Uh, we won't be using the original lamp. We'll be using an LED uh, portable bench light. But we do need to get this thing going. So that's the next job, try out the motor. Mm -hmm.